Hi everyone. So, as I mentioned earlier, today we are going to talk about inventory problem again, but this time we are going to consider the back orders. So that is the main differences between today's lecture and the last time, right? Okay. Uh, okay. This is the in class problem for today. Um, so I named it SS inventory with bag orders. So the first S, do you know, uh, do you remember anybody what the first S, small s stands for? That is the reorder point, right? And the capital S, large S, is the maximum inventory level, right? Um, and then inventory with bag orders. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so these are the problem description. Those are very similar to the one last time. And okay, these are the extra information maybe in addition to Last time, yeah. Uh, could you grab one of these? Yeah. And we are going to use uh, all of this cost information later. Um, and those are the state definition. Okay, so um, let me give you maybe about three to four minutes. Why don't you read through the problem description and then try to uh, build up your Markov chain model okay, using the stated definitions. Okay, I will get back to you. Uh, And a couple of you emailed me about the midterm exam. And I'd like to let you know um, we went through a good number of in-class exercises during the regular class hour, right? So basically, the format of the exam will be very similar to those. Okay? Uh, bottom line is, if you understand what we've been talking about during the regular lecture, then uh, you'll be okay. Of course, this is an exam, so you're going to expect there could be uh, one or at least one or two uh, intermediate questions, okay? uh, advanced questions. Unless otherwise, most of the questions will be uh, very straightforward. Okay, so let's work on on this example problem together. Uh, so just like last time, let's suppose you are a, a luxury car dealer again. So at the end of each day, um, let's say around maybe 9 to 10 p.m., you observe the inventory level. Okay. Um, so let me use the uh, diagram. Oh, 
So this is the timeline. Uh, by the way, I hurt my thumb yesterday, so please, please understand my handwriting will be really ugly maybe this time. I will try to do my best. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, this is the timeline, and then so this is yesterday. And let's say this is today. And we do have a business hour each day. Let's say start from 8 o'clock in the morning until, I don't know, 5 o'clock or maybe 8 o'clock at night. So 8 to 8 is the business hour. And then um, end of each day, so let's say 9 o'clock at night is the checking time. Okay, so each day at 9 o'clock you check your inventory level. Okay, and also we assume that uh, the demand occurs during the business hour only right, during this period of time. Okay, so let's go back to the problem description. Okay. Um, and if you go down here, it will say uh, if the inventory level exceeds one, right? That is the so that's going to be the real point. So if the inventory level exceeds one, then no action is taken. Unless otherwise, which means if the inventory level is one car or less, like this, then enough number will be ordered to bring the uh, inventory level up to four. So we notice that the maximum inventory level is four okay, in this problem. So here, the first S, small s, is one. That is the build point. And the large s, that is the maximum inventory level, is given as four. OK? We notice that. So in other, in other words, if you have only one car or less in your display room, then you're going to order a certain number of cars to repair the display room, right? Uh, that is a maximum capacity of four cars. And um, also, just like we did the last time, um, we are again assuming that the order may be placed and is instantaneously received, okay? So we assume that you are going to receive the cards that you ordered uh, instantaneously, right away, so that uh, the replenishment is done before the business reopens the next day morning, okay? So your next day morning business will, will be reopened with a full inventory level of four. That is our assumption. Okay. And here, the probability distribution of demand is the same for each day. Okay. So that is given as this. So we're going to use this probability distribution. So this time, each day, there should be at least one demand. Okay. One, two, or three demands each day. Keep in mind this, okay? And we are also given this cost information, okay? And we use 
the state definition like this. Let me see. Okay. So we define the state of system. Um, according to the inventory level at the end of day, okay? Of course, before replenishment occurs, okay? So we are going to define a state one represents there is a negative stock on hand, okay? And state number two means zero stock on hand, and then zero, uh, state number three means there is one stock, and so on. Okay. Um, okay. Second, please. So first of all, we're gonna um, build up one step, one stage transition probability matrix, just like we did. And then after that, we are going to answer for this uh, series of questions, one to nine, okay? Okay, so... Let's go back to this. Let me see. Okay, so we have um, state one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. And here I put the inventory level, which is starting from negative one, two, four. There is a maximum inventory level, right? So let's start from state number six. That is the inventory level of four. Let's see what transitions are possible starting from state number four. Okay. So given that the inventory level is four last night, right? Last night it was four. We want to know how many cars we will left tonight, okay? That's what you are going to figure out. So, uh, what about piece of six? Six. That means starting from state number six, and then after one day, we come back to state number six. What is this? In words, there is a probability that tonight, you have four, right, tonight. Given that, there were four last night, right? That's because there is no demand occurred during the business hour today, okay? No demand today. What is that probability? That is zero, right? Because we need to stick to... I cannot. I cannot go back. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Okay. Because we have to stick to this demand distribution. Since every day, at least there is one demand, right? So this probability has to be zero. Okay? So this has to be zero. So this never occurs. Okay? So I'm going to delete this.
transition. Then what about this transition? That is P sub six to five. There is probability given the inventory level was four last night. And then tonight the inventory level has re reduced down to three. Right? Because there is one demand earlier today, right? So what is this? That's going to be 25%, right? That's going to be 0.25. So this is demand is equal to 1, right? Which is 0.25. Of course, you can continue, right? So, what is this probability? Six to four. Given the inventory level was four last night, and tonight it becomes two. That's because during today, during the business hour, the demand was 2. So 4 minus 2 becomes 2, right? What is this probability? It's 50%. So that's going to be 0.5, right? So in the same way, 6 to 3 should be 0.25, right? So, um, let me let me draw a big a matrix. Yes. On this state, so this one is only one to five, right? Um. Okay, I, I, let me explain this, uh, why I set up initially. But um, you currently have six different states, right? But I'm going to explain you why um, I don't have state number six originally. But uh, let's go with six different states at the moment, OK? So, yes? Is this the, at the beginning of each day, a company observes the inventory level you know, at the night? Could you take this uh, data again? Uh, at the beginning of each day, a company observes the inventory level. So does it change anything between checking in the night and in the morning? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. It says that also they order immediately at the beginning of the problem. Okay, here. Oh, uh, yeah. I should change this. Okay. So... Let's put, instead of beginning, let's put end, OK? Sorry about this. But in your handout, uh, did I give you the handout with beginning? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So let's make these changes. OK. Thank you. So um, yeah, that is about the checking time, right? So we are assuming that uh, at the end of each day, you're going to observe your inventory level just once per each day. Thank you. OK, where was I? So let's make a big transition matrix. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five and six. So what he did so far is this, right? So six to six is zero. Six to five is point to five. Six to four is point five. Six to three is point to five. So let's put this information. Here we have zero, and then here we have point to five. 
and then 0 0.5, and then 0 0.25. And we have 200. Zero, zero. Make sure summation of each row has to be equal to 1, right? OK, now we move to the next. So I'm going to redraw the diagram. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we start from state number five at the moment. And then I'm going to put the inventory label, which is start from negative one to four. Okay. So do we have this transition? Five to six. Last night there was four, but tonight you have four. I'm sorry. Last night you have three, but last uh, last night you have three, but tonight you have four. This this never happened, right? Right. Yeah, because you didn't reach the real point, so no actions were taken. So the inventory level will never ever be increased, right? So this is zero. What about this? Last night, there were f three cars, and tonight, you still have three cars, which means the demand is zero. There is zero percent, right? So there is at least one demand, right? Right. Because each day, there must be either one, two, or three demands. Okay? So this must be zero as well. And then here, five to four. So last night, there was three. And tonight, you have two left. Because during the day today, there is one demand, right? So that's going to be 0 0.25. Likewise, here you have 0 0.5 and then 0 0.25. Right? So we're going to put this into our matrix. So four, 5 to 4 is 0 0.25 and then 0 0.5 and 0 0.25. And 0. Zero, zero. So it looks like we shifted again to the left, right? By one column. So we just need to continue on very similar way. Starting from four. That is the inventory level of two. Of course, we're going to have these three transitions, right? Because this time we allow back orders. If there are two last night, if there are three demands, then tonight you're going to have one back order, right? So. This transition still occurred with the same probability distribution 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.25. All right? So let's put this into our matrix. So we have 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0 0.25. Okay? work on another scenario. So this time we start from 
stay number three. So we reach the reorder point. Okay? So that means last night when you check your display room, there is only one car left. So in that case, you're going to order how many? Three more cars, right? So you're going to receive all of those three cars that you ordered by the end of today, by the end of last night, actually. Okay? So today, early in the morning, you should be able to start your business with a full inventory level of four, right? So again, in that case, if there is one demand during the day today, tonight you're going to have three cars left, right? If there are two demands during the today, today, business hour, then tonight you're going to have only two cars left. If there are three demands during the business hour today, then there is only one car left. Is that right? So you have 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.25. Is that correct? So we're going to put this information down here. 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 and zero, zero, okay? So again, if you look at this, two rows, compare that, that's exactly the same, right? So if you continue on that, four, five, and six, now we start from state number two. So nothing slept last night, okay? Then you're gonna order how many cars? Four cars last night, right? And then all of those four cars will be received instantaneously, right away. So that you should be able to re uh, start the business today, early this, early this morning with Full inventory level of four cars, right? So even if you start with zero car last night, earlier this morning you have full inventory level of four cars, right? And then during the day today, if there is one demand, then tonight you will end up with three cars, right? So you're gonna have this transition with 25% of chances, is that right? Again, starting with zero car last night, so you have all four cars received, right? Last night. And then during the day today, if there are two demands, then you will end up with two cars, right? So what is this probability transition? that's going to be, demand is 2.5, right? The same way, 2 to 3 is going to be 0.25, okay? So here, the row number 2, we have same probability distributions. Of course, here we're going to have the same probability distribution as well. Okay? So, right? Eh? Following me, any questions? So this is the last case, right? So starting from 
one back order last night. You can order at the moment um, five cars, right, actually, including the one in back order. So by last night, midnight, let's say, you're going to have full inventory level. And then during the day today, if there is one demand, you will end up with three, right, tonight. So this is going to be 0.25. Same way, this is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.25, okay? That's why we have same probability distribution on the top row, okay? But here, one thing I want to tell you is, if you look at this uh, transition matrix that we developed, what happened to the last column? All of these values are zero, okay? Is that right? So even if we start from the full inventory level of four, which is inventory level, stock on hand is four, right? In state number four. Even if you start from uh, inventory, inventory level of four, which is here, stock on hand is four. You never stay in state number four, why? Because each day, we assume that there must be at least one demand, right? So even if you start from full inventory level, you never stay in state number six. That's why you end up with all zero values in the bottom column, okay, the last column. So uh, for me, uh, defining this state number six is useless, okay? in this Markov chain. So you can take this out, the last column and last row, okay? So you can use only this five by five matrix that is okay, okay? Unless otherwise you're gonna have uh, extra computation, okay? It is gonna take up just time, more time. That's why um, at the beginning here, um, I put, we can use only five different state. Okay, starting from one, that represents one bag order, and then five, last state has only three inventory level. Okay, but it's okay, again, you can go with six by six matrix if you want. Okay, mm, that is less confusing than you can go with six by six matrix. But I'd say uh, you don't need to go with that because of this reason. So, um, I put, okay, I provide all of this information uh, here. And if you look at the uh, first matrix uh, and the following information as well, we have only uh, five by five matrix, okay? Instead of six by six matrix. So this is the one step probability, uh, transition probability matrix P. So I put uh, P here. So this is P1 and then P square matrix. And this is P to the fourth power, oh, I'm sorry, this is going to be P cube, right? Okay. And then P to the fourth power. And these are pi, uh, I put pi value. And this is first visit probabilities, first passage probabilities. So this is F1, right? I put F here. And F square, 
f cube f to the fourth power, right? And this is the mean first passage time. I put m here. So we are going to use all of this information to answer the uh, series of questions. Okay. Okay, so let's answer for the first question. If the inventory has three units at the end of the day on Monday, what is the probability that there is a back order Wednesday night? Uh, is that how do you answer? So which matrix did you look at? First of all, we noticed that um, this is a two-day forecast problem, right? Starting from Monday until Wednesday, there are two days differences, right? So we, you need to look at P square matrix, right? And starting from inventory level of three. So that's going to be state number five. And then you end up with the order state, which is one, right, in the end. So what is this probability? One or minus one. What? That is a state number, right? What is state number one represents? That is a back order, yeah, right? So you need to look at this. What is this probability? <coughs> so you need to look at P square matrix, five, one. So it's going to be 6.25%, right? So 6.25%, right? Okay. How about second problem? So we're going to use basically pi equals pi p, right? And summation of pi should be equal to 1, right? So if you want to go with 6 by 6 matrix, then pi 1s should be pi times the first column of this p matrix, right? So pi 1 equals pi times the first column of this p matrix is going to be 0 0.25 pi 4. So right? What about pi 2? Pi 2 is equal to pi times the second column of this p matrix. So it's going to be 0 0.5 pi 4 plus 0 0.25 pi 5. Likewise, pi 3 is going to be pi times the third column of P matrix. So, right? so that's going to be 0 0.25 times pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 plus pi 4 plus pi 6. And then plus 0.5 times pi 5, right? So pi 3 is, of course, 0.25 times pi 1, 2, 3, 4, and pi 6 plus 0.5 pi 5. Is that right? Okay. Likewise, pi 4 is pi times 
the first column of this matrix. It's going to be 0.5 times pi 1, 2, 3, 6, plus 0.25 times pi 5. One, two, three, and six. All right. One, two, three, and six, and then point to five times pi five. Okay. So if you continue on this, pi five is what? Pi times the fifth column of P matrix. So that's going to be 0.25 times pi 1 plus pi 2, pi 3, and pi 6. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, and 6. OK. And lastly, pi 6 is pi times the last column of P matrix. See here? should be zero, right? Because this last column is all equal to zero. So we can see that there is no point to define state number six because it's zero. State is state probability for state number six is zero, okay? So you don't need to go with 6 by 6 matrix for this reason. You can go with only 5 by 5 matrix, OK? Only this. In that case, you can save this, right? You don't need to include pi 6. So anyway, I'm going to take this out because we need to choose arbitrarily one of these equations because they are linearly dependent. And then add the last constraint, pi 1 plus pi 2 plus 3, 4, 5, and 6 equal to 1. So using these six equations, you should be able to determine steady state probabilities. Okay. Okay, uh, where is that? Okay, the bottom. Okay, now let's work on number three. If the uh, inventory level on Monday night was zero, so there's nothing left uh, Monday night, then what is the expected number of days until a back order occurs? So, Yes, you're going to use mean first passage probabilities, right? So you're going to look at M two, right? State number two represents the stuck out, right? And then one. Right? Because state number one represents a back order. You are in back order. Right? So what is this number? M to one. So if you go all the way down M to one is twelve point eight 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 nine, right? So that's going to be 12.889. So I'd say it's approximately 13 days. Okay, it's going to take. Okay, then how would you answer for question number four? So if Monday night there were two cars, then what is the probability that a bag order is observed Thursday night? So Monday through Thursday, there are 
How many days difference? Three days difference, right? Starting from Monday until Thursday. There are three days gap. So you need to look at P cube matrix, right? And Monday night, inventory level was two, right? So stay number four. And then Thursday night, you have back order. So it's going to be one. What is this? Okay, it's going to be 12.5 percent, right? Now, how'd you answer? First uh, question number five. Uh, okay, so it looks like question number four and five are very similar, but only the difference is here. Number five, I put the word next. Okay, so. Because of this word, we need to look at first passage probability, F matrix, instead of P matrix. Is that right? And all other, all other information is exactly the same. So what is this? That's 9.375%. Is that right? Does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay, now number six. During the next hundred days, the number of times back orders will occur as predicted by this model is what? Pi one? Okay, so the, during the next 100 days, number of times back order will occur is 100 days times pi 1. Is that right? So how much is that? If you go down, what is the value of pi 1? Pi 1 is this. So 100 times pi 1 should be 7.76. So that's going to be 7.76. Okay. Okay. Then how do you answer for question number 7? If Monday night, nothing left, and Tuesday night, there were two cars in your display room, then what is the probability that the Thursday night, there will be uh, nothing left? How do you answer this question? Which, prob which property are you going to use? Here, you're going to use memory list property. Is that right? So we do not consider what happens on Monday. We only consider what happens on Tuesday night. Okay? That is the past information. Do you remember what the memory is property is, right? Any conditional prob probability of the future state is only depend upon the current state. And it is totally depend upon it is totally independent from the past state. Okay? So what is this probability? Starting from Tuesday night with two cars. What is the probability that Thursday night, you have zero cars left. So what is this? There are two days difference between Tuesday and Thursday, right? So you need to look at P square matrix. Tuesday night, there are two cars, right? So that's going to be, uh, what is that? Four, right? And then Thursday night, you have zero cars. 
two. What is this value? Zero percent. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let's do the number eight uh, after we talk about number nine. Okay, so let's work on number nine first. If the stock on hand was three Monday night, what is the probability that next time stock on hand equal to three will be Friday night? So which information you're gonna look at? How many days forecast? Is that Monday through Friday? How many days difference? Four days difference, right? Hmm? Yeah, and then again, because of this word, next. next time, you need to look for F matrix instead of P matrix. So F to the fourth power matrix, that is what you need to look at. Starting from three, end up with three. So it's gonna be five, five, right? What is this? So here, five, five. What is this? 12.1%, right? So that's gonna be 12.1, almost 12% maybe, okay? Any questions so far? Number eight, you're going to work on that. So why is two percent this five five right? Right. Oh I'm sorry, it's twelve percent. Okay. So this is twelve percent, okay. Almost. Okay. Oh, what happened? It's twelve percent. Okay, now let's work on number eight. So in number eight, we are going to compute the average cost, average total cost per day, okay? So in order to do that, we need to use all of this information, okay? So we're going to consider $2 cost for the unit of inventory on hand at the end of the day. So that is the inventory cost, right? And then for the ordering cost, um, this is going to be one-time fixed cost, right? $5. And then uh, $0.50 cents is the variable cost, right? And demand which cannot be satisfied immediately is back ordered. And the cost of three dollars per unit is backlogged. So there is a back order cost, unit back order cost. So we're going to consider all these three different uh, kind of cost, right? Okay. So I'm going to write down number eight here. So I'm going to make a big table here. And this table, the first column stores the state information, which is I. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and then second column, I'm going to put the inventory level, stock on hand level. That's going to be starting from negative one 
two, zero, one, two, and three. Okay. And then I'm going to put pi values. Okay, steady state probability information. So, you know, I already provide all of those information up here, right? So I'm going to just put this information. So it does be 0 0.078. 0 0.189, 0 0.285, 0 0.310, 0 0.138. Okay? And then next column, I'm going to put the cost values. Okay? And then we have three different types of cost. So I'm going to break it down to three different columns. Okay, so the first column, I'm going to put the ordering cost. Okay, and then next column, I'm going to put the inventory cost, holding cost. Okay, and then I'm going to put the backlogged cost. And then, in the end, I'm going to put the total cost. That is simply adding up those three different costs, okay, down here. Of course, the ordering cost include the fixed cost and variable cost, right? Okay. So let's work on the first case. So when you check your inventory level display room, you are in back order of one car. So in that case, how many cars are you going to order, including this? Five. Why is three? You're going to order five, right? So negative 1 plus 5 becomes 4. That is the maximum inventory level of 4. Is that right? So you're going to order 5 cars, right? So in that case, one time a fixed cost of $5 will be considered, right? And then since you're going to order 5, you're going to spend 50 cents for each of those five different cars, right? So it's going to be 5 plus 5 times 0.5. That's going to be your ordering cost. Is that right? Okay. What if there is zero cars left when you check your inventory level? How many are you going to order? Four cars, right? In that case. So four times 50 cents plus one time of ordering cost of five dollars. That's what you need to consider, right? So we we need to consider you need to continue on this. If there is one car left, then you're gonna order how many? Three cars you're gonna order that. So in the end one plus three becomes four cars. There is a full inventory level, right? So three times 50 cents plus, again, one time ordering cost of $5. If there are two cars left, then what is your ordering cost? Zero. You're not going to do anything, right? Zero. If there are three cars, you're not going to do anything because they didn't reach the real point, right? Are you following me? Okay, so you gotta be careful. Just do it carefully, one by one. 
this is not a tricky question, right? You just need to be careful, carefully consider every single condition, one by one. Okay, now let's work on the holding cost. How much you gonna spend for the holding cost? If there is one car in bag order, how much is that? Nothing. You don't have anything. Why you spend for the holding cost, right? Again, if the inventory level is zero, currently, holding cost is zero. You're not gonna spend any money on that, right? Simply because you don't have any cars right now. But if you have one car in your display room, then you're gonna spend how much? Two dollars, right? For that car, one car. There is two dollars per each car, right? So you have one car, so one times two gonna be your holding cost. If there are two cars, then two times two, right? If there are three cars, three times two. That's gonna be your holding cost. Is that right? Okay, now let's work on the back order cost, back logged cost. Okay, if there is one car in back order, then of course you're gonna pay Three dollars on that, right? Per each cars in back order, times one, right? And then, unless otherwise, you don't have any back order cost, right? Those are all zero. Does that make sense? So, what would be the total cost? First case, five plus five times point five plus zero plus three. How much is that? Is that gonna be 7.5 plus three, 10.5 dollars, okay? 10 dollars and 50 cents, is that right? How about the next? Five plus four times 0.5, how much is that? Seven, how about this? Five plus three times 0.5 plus Two plus zero. Eight point five, right? How about this? It's four and then six. Is that right? So how'd you get the average total cost? Average total expected cost. How'd you get it? Exactly. So what do you need is pi times total cost plus pi 2 times total cost plus pi 3 times total cost pi 4 times total cost and then plus pi 5 times total cost. That's what you need to do. So average cost, average expected total cost should be sum over i's pi i times, let's say this is tc, okay? Then tc i, that's what you need to do. Does it, anybody has this value? Well, it should be easy, right? Got answer? No? Is that how much? Six point? Four eight seven. Four eight seven, so it's almost six point nine. Okay. Six dollars almost fifty cents. Something like this. That's what you can expect, right? Six point sixty. Six point sixty? Okay. Something like this. 
So does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Okay, so this is all for today. Uh, and next time I'm gonna give you another example problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, maybe different example. Okay. Let me let me think about that. Okay. And uh, let me know if you have uh, any questions regarding uh, I five fifteen class. Okay, feel free to contact me. You can call me or uh, email me or you can stop by. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. See you next time.